All right, we're gonna skip this shape. I figure you all can probably do this in your sleep, so I'm gonna show you how to do this one. Uh, we're gonna split it up into let's call this let's call this the base, and then this will be the shaft. We're gonna make the base of the shaft, bottom of the shaft first. It's just a cylinder with some cuts off the top and the bottom. That cylinder is 60 millimeters in diameter. And I've been staring at this for a while, and there is not a measurement it gives you for uh, the, the thickness of it. What is the distance between here and here? So we're just going to assume that it's 10. So we need a 60 by 10 millimeter cylinder. We're going to turn this right side up. Now, the... The, the flats that are cut off the top and bottom doesn't tell you how much to cut off but it does tell you the top of what was our cylinder to the bottom of our cylinder is 52 millimeters so from here to here is 52 millimeters but remember our diameter was 60 so in total we're cutting off 8 millimeters from the top and bottom we're going to assume that it's cut off evenly right so what is half of 8 well that's 4 so we need to cut 4 millimeters off the top 4 millimeters off the bottom. I'm just going to drag this guy through here. Should be four tall. I'm going to duplicate it. Send the duplicate up top. Now let's think. How tall should this guy be? Well, we're measuring from the bottom of this guy. This guy is four millimeters tall. The diameter is 60. So the top of this guy should line up with the top of that guy. Therefore, I should raise it up 60 minus four millimeters, which puts me at 56 millimeters group that together. Next we're going to make the uh, the next extrusion. It's a cylinder. It doesn't tell us how long it is but we do know the distance between the very edge of our shaft to here is 145 and the edge of our shaft to th this part of the extrusion is 105 so the difference between those two 145 minus 105 must be 40 so we have a cylinder that is sticking out 40 millimeters and its diameter is 42. All right, I messed up its height. We said it was 40. We're going to go ahead and align these guys. Good. Next, we're going to do the final extrusion. It's a cylinder that is 42 millimeters in diameter. How far does it extend outwards? 105 millimeters, so 42 by 105. Center that. Mm -mm. I messed something up. It's not supposed to be 42. It's supposed to be. Oh, yeah, I messed that up. Uh, it says down here the radius of this guy should be. The radius is 17.5, which means the diameter is twice that. What is 2 times 17.5? 17, 17 plus 17 is 34 plus 1, 35. All right, so we should be actually. 35 and I screwed up uh, this distance what did we say that had to be 105 all right throw a work plane here drop this guy to the work plane align these beautiful we're going to group everything together. Now we need to carve out this flat spot right here. This flat spot is 64 millimeters long. Now how deep should it go down into the shaft? Well, it doesn't tell us that, but it does tell us from the center of the shaft to the top of uh, where it gets cut off, that's 7.5 millimeters. So here's what we're going to do. Uh, 
I'm going to drop this down in the work plane. What is my height? Well, my height is 51.99. Um, I'm going to put a, it doesn't matter whether it's a uh, solid or, or whole, but I'm going to put this cube on the work plane so that I can set a work plane on top of it. And that work plane uh, cuts this, uh, my shaft in half. So what is half of 51.99? That's 26. So we're going to make this guy 26. Enter, click on work plane, put a work plane on there, and then I can delete it. I'm done with it. I no longer need it because this work plane uh, cuts the shaft in half. Now, my cut starts 7.5 millimeters up from the center. Now, how deep does it cut? We can get that knocked out here at 64. I'm going to uh, align the faces. And this guy should go up 7.5 millimeters. And we're going to group it. Good. Now, uh, if you look closely, you're going to see that there's a <clears throat> chamfer right here. There's not a great tool to, to chamfer to make that beveled cut. So I'm going to show you a little trick. It involves a cylinder. We're going to make this cylinder a little bit bigger than this guy. What do we say 17.5 times 2 was? 35 or something like that? Let's make this, let's make it 37. 37, crank sides up to 64. Then I'm going to get a cone and I'm going to flip it upside down. And I'm going to make that cone pretty big. Now I'm also going to crank the sides up to 64 on the cone so it looks smooth. I'm going to align these guys. Then I'm going to turn the cone into a hole. I'm going to push that down into my cylinder. And I'm going to group these guys. Then I'm going to turn this into a hole. Knock it on over. Align it with the shaft. And then I am going to use the arrow keys to bring this out. And it's going to cut a uh, a beveled, yeah, a bevel, a chamfer all around that shaft. Look at that. That looks nice, don't it? Looks like we know what we're doing. All right, done with that. Now, this next part is really not fun. Tinkercad is not the software to use to make a part like this, but we're going to do what we can to get uh, an acceptable product. Um, so I'm going to make just this face right here, and then I'll extrude it out and then cut holes in it. But the base of that shape is uh, 10 millimeters by how wide? Well, it's 74. So I need a 10 by 74 rectangle. Good. Now I need to put a, it's going to be a cylinder. And the cylinder has a radius of 15 or a diameter of 30. And I'm going to put that thing, that, that cylinder 43 millimeters up off of my base. So I'm going to start by dragging one of these guys out. I already forgot. Radius of 30, show diameter, diameter of 30. That's what I'm saying. And the center of it is how far off of, in this case, it'll be the bottom of our base. Well, it's 45. Show, but that's the center. Let's, let's, throw a ruler out here and uh, measure from the midpoint. The center of this guy should be 43 millimeters off my work plane. So we're going to go 43, enter. I'm going to go ahead and align these guys. This guy should actually be solid. These dimensions don't really matter. I'm just making everything 20 wide. We're going to change it later. All right. Now, this is where uh, it gets kind of life hacky. We're going to come in here. We're going to type in trapezoid. 
and Tinkercad gives you this trapezoid that you can actually manipulate the top and the bottom of it, which is super kind of them. Um, the base is 74, so base width, we're going to type in 74. The, uh, the top width, we'll figure that out. Is this where it's supposed to be? Yeah, it is. So I'm going to group my cylinder to my base just so they can't move around um, at all. I'm going to align my trapezoid with the base. Make this guy 20. All right. Now, here's the thing. If you uh, if you made the top width of the rectangle what you think it should be, which is uh, 30, right? Because the diameter of this guy was 30. Here's what would happen. Top width 30. It does line up, but it looks kind of weird, right? So here's what we're going to do. We are going to raise this up some. And in my case, I have it at 38. And then I'm going to shrink that top width by one millimeter at a time until we get something that looks acceptable. Give it time to load. It's almost acceptable. We're going to go to 8 and see what that looks like. All right, we can work with that. If we wanted to be really nitpicky, let's try 28.5. Uh, I don't like that. 28.3. Should have done 0.3, Yeah, that's about as perfect as we're going to get it. So, group all that together. All right, and that doesn't look too bad. Uh, that's about as good as you're going to get using solely Tinkercad. Now we need to put this hole right here. That hole has a diameter of 10. It is 43 millimeters off the bottom of our object. Diameter of 10. And we said 43 millimeters off the work plane. I'm just going to do some math off the top of my head. If my cylinder is 10, the center of the cylinder uh, is only 5 millimeters. So 43 plus 5 minus 5. What? Or is that? It needs to be minus 5, right? Yeah, 43 minus 5 gives me 38. So this guy should be 38. Yep, it's what we want. Send that hole through our object. Group it. Now, how wide should this object really be? Well, it should be 78 millimeters wide, right? That is this measurement right here. So while this guy is loading, we will refresh the page. Mm, okay, thank thank you. Show many eight. Now I need to cut a hole in here, right? I need to make it hollow, essentially. Uh, it doesn't tell me the walls are 10 um, millimeters thick, but we're going to assume that. So if the entire, uh, let's just call this the height of the object, is 70, what did I say that was, 76 or 78? I put 78, it's actually supposed to be 76. I hope we're going with 76. Uh, 76 minus 10 for this wall minus 10 for this wall gives me 76 minus 10 is 66 minus 10 is 56. So we need to put a hole that is 56 millimeters wide. Uh, it should extend through the entire object and it needs to be 10 millimeters off the base of the work plane. And it 
to extend up through the entire object. Now, yes, this hole is touching the shaft, but as long as I don't select the shaft, I can group this together, and it's not going to affect it at all. Oh, what did I do wrong? What did I do wrong? Mm, this guy's probably... Oh, it's just not centered, most likely. That's all. A simple fix. All right, now we're going to knock this guy over. Turn it this way. Drag it back some. We're going to throw a work plane on that surface. Click on our shaft. Click D to drop it to that work plane. And we're going to align it. Boom, boom. Is that correct? That is the incorrect orientation of the green thing. That is correct. Double check that we didn't throw anything out of whack. We did not, so we are going to group that together, get rid of that work plane, click D to drop to our work plane, and let's make this gray. Look at that, we finished it. Done in under 17 minutes.